Hey folks, Ozone B here, ready to share some wisdom of what I've learned in the first week of playing Vault Hunters on the Vaultcraft SP. Now I'm in my own little creative test world to talk about it, but one of the things that I've learned is that the vault progression in the early stages changes drastically as you level in the first few levels. So let's start with level zero. So let's say you're here at your very first vault. We don't need to go into how to make this, that's been covered enough times, but what I want to talk about is what do you want to bring in with you? And there's a few surprises. Obviously, you want some food. A water bucket is super useful. It helps to keep the mobs away at times, and it can help you to travel up and down through the vaults. Building blocks are also extremely useful because there's not always a way to get to the POI. A bow can be an incredible tool in the vault, letting you keep your distance and pick off and kite those mobs as you go along without taking the damage. A pickaxe, well, yeah, of course, you need a pickaxe to be able to break the blocks around. Maybe you'll find some vault ores. Who knows? But a pickaxe is always a good thing to have. Now, you can also have an axe or a shovel, but these things are less useful than a pickaxe. I like to recommend some torches because the vaults are sometimes dark and it can increase the light around you if you've got dynamic lighting turned on, but they also make a pretty good and cheap way to mark your way in and out of the vaults. The last most important tool is your spatula. Mm-hmm, you heard me right, your spatula. The spatula is a really simple tool to craft, but it's a weapon. It's not just a decorative tool thing. It's from the furniture mod and one of the mods that we have unlocked initially. It does take specifically black wool, and this can be a real challenge to try to get, but otherwise the materials are not too hard to get early game. But compare the difference between an iron sword with six attack damage and 1.6 attack speed versus the spatula at six attack damage, 2.6 attack speed. The spatula is a lot faster, and that translates to more damage per second. When wielding the sword, it shows that my damage calculation is 9.6, which is a calculation based on the damage and the attack speed. But when wielding the spatula, the damage is increased drastically, up to 15.6. Now surely this is only comparable to an iron sword, right? No, the diamond sword still has a pitiful 11.2 damage, and netherite, is still a pitiful 12.8. Because we don't have any enchants, the spatula is just plain a faster weapon and that makes your damage higher. Hard as it is to believe, this spatula is better than a netherite sword. I kind of expect that to get nerfed at some point, but in the meantime, a spatula is your best friend. Now, because we can go into vaults at a much lower level, much earlier in the game, iron is pretty good for level zero. You can survive. You'll do better in diamond or even netherite if you advance that far without going into the vaults first, but iron is sufficient. Your limiting factor here will most likely be your hearts. Because we don't have protection and chance on the armor, the end is a very, very dangerous place. And even in diamond or netherite, it, you can still die to shulkers very, very easily. So I don't recommend trying to go to the end, but if you happen to do so, you can get some healing potions there. But otherwise, you can't create healing potions until you've been in the vaults. That's because the recipe for a golden apple, which is the heart of the healing potion, requires a vault apple. And there's no way to get a vault apple without first going into a vault. So your level zero vaults are going to be very short. You're going to want to leave when you start getting low on hearts. Don't push it too much. The early crystals are really easy to make and don't take a lot of resources. So don't sweat the vault time at all. In fact, my very first vault... I think I left with 18 minutes left on the clock. Mm -hmm. I left when I got down to three hearts. The first rule of vaulting is to get out. Get out. Regardless of anything else, just get out. If you don't get out, you don't get any loot at all. So it's much better off to try to get out and have something than to greed and push your luck and not get out at all. So for your level zero, don't even go past the first room. Just stick in the first room until you're low on hearts and then get out. The first thing you want to do when you come through that vault portal is you want to make a note about which direction you're facing. In this case, I'm facing north, but it doesn't always turn out to be that way. It can be any direction. Directly out of the portal room is a tunnel that'll take you to your first room. And honestly, this should be perfectly safe. Generally speaking, the vaults themselves are very safe unless you get close to a point of interest. As soon as you get out of the tunnel, you want to put down a marker to mark which tunnel you've actually come from. To me, I like to do this with a row of torches, but some people like to use blocks like this. 
Although in this case, these blocks blend in with the surrounding palette of the blocks in this vault. It's pretty hard to find a block that is always going to stand out. And so this is why I like to use torches. If you've got the game rule enabled, you can put down a waypoint as well. The waypoints work just the same as they did in Vault Hunters 1.16. Except the only way that I know to make a waypoint is to make it a temporary waypoint, and that by default is the plus key on your number pad. Pressing the U key to bring up your waypoint list doesn't work inside the vaults. Once you've figured out how to mark the way back out, now it's time to take a look around and look for the points of interest. They're generally not going to be on the main level where the tunnels are out of here. This main level is generally quite safe. If there are some up in the air, like a hanging thing, it, they can sometimes trigger just by you walking by, but that doesn't happen all that often, and you get to hear them. However, if you get into a room and there's a whole bunch of mobs already spawned here, be very, very afraid, because there's probably an elite mob within them. The elite mobs spawn with a whole pack of normal mobs around them, and they don't follow the normal spawner mechanics. As soon as the room generates, they spawn. So that's something to be careful of. But it's a fairly rare occurrence. I think I've run like 20 vaults and seen maybe two of them. But see, up there, there's a POI up in that area, and there's going to be some down here. And the vault rooms can actually have multiple levels underneath them or above them, so you've really got to explore and look around. This is where your water bucket comes in super handy. There's generally some kind of path that goes down, but you can always just drop a water bucket too. Especially at level zero, these guys aren't going to put up that much of a fight. These guys are going to actually be easier to kill than the mobs in the overworld. You do always have to be careful of creepers. Because we have no protection on the armor, a creeper will kill you very, very fast. You don't even have to be that close to them. So definitely, this is where your bow comes in, and boom, easy peasy. Now, of the common points of interest, like half of them are going to have ambush spawners, or as I call them, fizzlers. That means they'll spawn a wave or two of a few mobs, and then all the loot will just be easy pickings, ready for you to pick it up. Some of the spawners, though, won't be fizzlers. They'll keep spawning new mobs over and over and over. So these you've got to be really careful about. Generally, at level zero, I wouldn't even bother with them. I would just run away and don't mess with them. You need an efficiency five pickaxe in order to break that spawner. And doing so in between waves of spawns can be very, very dangerous. If a bunch of mobs spawn on top of you, it's most likely a death sentence. So my advice for this level is to leave those spawners alone. The loot that you get from a points of interest that has a spawner that doesn't fizzle out versus the loot that you get from a POI that has a spawner that does fizzle out is exactly the same. It's all completely based on the rarity of the POI. Now, as you can see, I'm demonstrating another great tactic here at the early level, and that is to pillar up. If you're up at least two blocks, generally the mobs can't hit you. Now, the creepers can still explode, and that can be bad, but creepers only happen in vaults with certain themes, and so you've got to be extra careful of them any time you run into one of those themes. Generally, the desert themes are going to have creepers. And you can sit here and just shoot them with a bow, or you can potentially use your spatula if you're only two blocks up and try to kill a bunch of mobs at once. This can be a great way to farm some XP at those early levels, if, if that's all you're interested in. Quite honestly, the loot that you're going to get at level zero is pretty negligible. So if, you, if you're in a situation like this, it's not a bad idea to try it, if you have the hearts to last. Your biggest risk with this, however, is going to be a skeleton with a bow or a spider. Most of the time, skeletons don't spawn with a bow at this low level, but it is possible. And if it happens, that could end your trip really quick. Remember, at level zero, your limitation is the number of hearts that you have. So you should always avoid damage as much as you possibly can. I'm dead. <laughs> See, that's why you fear creepers at a low level. The vaults can potentially contain a lot of resources that you need for your base in the overworld, like pointed dripstone. Sometimes you can find it, sometimes you can't. And there's a whole bunch of other things that are useful and can be found in the vaults before you found it in the overworld, like cactus here too. So be on the lookout for things that you might need with your base and that you might be able to get from the vaults. There was one time I needed some rooted dirt for my next crystal, and I got a vault that gave me some rooted dirt, so I made sure to grab a block on the way out. Just remember to start heading out when you get down to about three hearts. And why three hearts? Well, 
just to give you a little extra breathing room. Remember, play it safe. You could run into a mob that you missed and not know that it was there. Or you could fall on some dripstone. There's a lot of things that can happen to a couple hearts on your way out. And there we go. That little adventure, with plenty of time left on the clock, yielded about half of my first level. So now you've done a couple vaults and you've hit level one and you've got a skill point to spend. What are you going to spend it on? Well, when it comes to skill points, everybody has their own personal style and there is no one right way to do it. But if you ask me, and you're watching this video, so I'm going to share my opinion. In this case, at level one, there is only one choice, and that is the heal ability. This will heal you four half hearts every 10 seconds as long as you have mana, which means about three times in a row before your mana runs out and you have to wait for it to refill. But being able to heal in the vaults is super valuable. Remember, at level one, you didn't really have any healing and your hearts was the limiting factor, not the time. So by taking heal, you eliminate that first constraint. And now, now you have a different constraint and your vaults can last a little longer. You're still constrained, by one big thing though, and that is your inventory. There are a lot of things that you can pick up in the vaults and you will fill up this inventory so fast, it won't be funny. There are three things that you can make to get some more inventory space. The easiest of which is the sack. The sack is made from just flax and string. You gotta set it down to access it, but it acts like a small shulker box, giving you nine slots of inventory. Given how easy it is to make early on, there's no reason not to do this as soon as possible. After you've been in a couple vaults, you may get lucky and find some shulker shells. Shulkers are, of course, one of the best ways to get more inventory space. But there is another, and that is a bundle. If you can find some magic silk in the vaults, you can make a bundle very easily. Yep, bundles make an appearance here, and honestly, they are super valuable for managing your inventory as well. These bundles operate exactly like the vanilla Minecraft bundles do and did when they were in the previews, meaning that they can hold only 64 items, but you can hold 64 different items or 64 of the same item. It doesn't matter. Given that you're finding small quantities of a lot of things in the vault, bundles can really make a difference in managing your inventory. If you get lucky and get a shulker or some magic silk and make a bundle, or even if you just go with a vanilla sack, Together or separately, these things can all help to mitigate your inventory management problems and lead to a lot more looting capabilities inside the vaults. So then the question becomes, what do you focus on with that extra time in the vaults? You focus on diamonds to get you some better armor and equipment, and you focus on magic silk, because the next thing you're gonna want is elytra. In this version of Vault Hunters, an elytra can actually be crafted, and for magic silk, isn't that difficult to find in the vaults and a Vault Essence, and then it's just the overworld requirements of Phantom Membrane and String, which also aren't that hard. Again, given how weak the armor is in this mod pack, and how strong the mobs are in the end, and the fact that we don't have any protection, means in all likelihood you're not going to go to the end for quite some time. And getting an Elytra is an incredibly important thing to get to open up your world, allow you to collect resources, and move about. So Magic S Silk and Vault Essence, in order to be able to craft an Elytra, should be high on your priority list. So now you've run a few more vaults, maybe gotten a little bit more geared up, and now you're level 2. It doesn't take that long, quite honestly. The next skill that I recommend is going to be Dash. Dash in this version operates just like Dash in the last version, in that it gives you a quick boost in a certain direction. Now because you've been collecting Magic Silk, you've also got an Elytra, and so you can fly with the Elytra, which I'm not wearing. But that's fine. But dash is also really, really useful for getting out of tight spots in the vault. When all of a sudden a wave of mobs spawn on you while you're trying to break the spawner, well dash will help to get you out of trouble. Now of course you don't have to do this, this is just my choice. I know plenty of people that have taken vein miner for their second one, which is honestly a great choice as well, because it's such a useful talent. But I think survivability in the vault is more important at this point, and dash is going to make a big difference for you. But at this point, I think I've shared everything that needs to be said about getting started. From this point on, the progression is very personal. It depends on your play style and what you like to do. For your first levels, up until level 10, here are the things that I think are important to take and that I think will help you out in the vaults a lot. They don't have to be taken in this exact order, but I think these are the foundational things that are going to be really helpful. First, of course, is heal, and then dash. 
Next is Vein Miner. The last six points are spent on Haste, Speed, and Strength, which are two points each, and that'll get you up through level 9. At level 10, well, I think you're on your own from there. But these skills are a great foundation to get you started in the game. I sure hope this video helped you to get started with the Vault Hunters and the 1.18 update. If you would, do me a huge favor and hit the sub button down below for more videos like this. Also, help everybody else out by leaving a comment down below with the things that you learned and that you think are important from running your first couple levels. It'll help everybody out. In the meantime, remember to be excellent to each other, and I'm out.